Firebase Summit wrapped up a few days ago, and although I wasn't able to make it in person, they did announce a bunch of cool new features. The feature that is most exciting to me is the local emulator for Firestore and the real-time database. The emulators allow you to run an instance of your database locally, meaning you can build up a test suite around your security rules. This not only speeds up development time, but it also increases the integrity of your backend security. In today's video, you'll learn how to set up the emulator and build out a full test suite using Jest. If you're new here, like and subscribe, and make sure to grab the full source code from angularfirebase.com. Now before we get going with the emulator, I'd also like to point out that Firebase announced a new project management API. This API makes it possible for apps to manage Firebase projects of other users. For example, you can now deploy your Firebase projects directly from StackBlitz or Glitch, but the more exciting thing going on there is that you can use this project management API to build your own apps that do the exact same thing. So let me know in the comments if you want to see that covered in a future video. So now let's get started talking about the emulator. The emulator just runs Firestore or the real-time database locally on your machine. This means you can now simulate interaction with the database without actually having to run it in the cloud. This makes it so much easier to be confident that a complex set of security rules are working the way that they should. I'm going to go ahead and set this project up with just vanilla JavaScript and Jest as the testing library. The reason I choose Jest is because it's very developer friendly and also really good at testing asynchronous code. To start testing your rules in isolation, I'd recommend starting from a brand new directory and then install the latest version of Firebase tools. Once that's done, you can run Firebase init Firestore, and that will pull in your existing security rules from whichever project you select. From there, you can run npm init to set up a package JSON in this folder. Then after that, we can install our testing utilities, which include at Firebase testing and Jest. That'll give us a directory structure that looks something like this. I've also created a spec folder that includes our testing files. All of our testing code will be written there, and then the thing we're actually testing is this Firestore rules file. If you're not already familiar with Firestore security rules, I recommend checking out episode 92 where I teach you all about rules and how to hack a Firebase app. And one additional pro tip I have for you here is to install the Firebase security rules plugin for VS Code to get syntax highlighting and autocomplete while you write out your rules. Now there are a few additional steps to install the emulator. You can do it directly from the command line with the instructions here, or you can install the Java jar file directly. You'll probably want to go with the command line option, but in either case you need to have Java installed on your system. If Java is not already on your system, head over to their super modern website and get it installed today. Now I want to show you what a basic test run will look like. We have two terminal windows set up here. On the left side, we'll go ahead and run the emulator, which we can do with Firebase serve only Firestore. That will run the local emulator in the background. You really just need to keep this in mind for debugging if it's not behaving the way you expect. Then on the right side, we can run the jest command to run our actual specs. Now I've been working with the emulator for a couple days now, and I want to start this video off by giving you some helpers that will just make your test easier to write. And also just to warn you, we're going to be writing a lot of async functions, so if you haven't seen the async await video, make sure to check that out as well. The first helper function is called setup, and this will create an instance of the emulated Firestore database. It also has the option to take an auth object, which will create a fake user, and also mock data that will be written to the database when it's initialized. Every time you initialize a test database, you'll want to give it a unique project ID. You can do this easily by just making your project ID a random number or a date timestamp. From this point, you'll want to go ahead and call Firebase initialize test app. It's important to note that when you initialize the app for the first time, it will not have any security rules applied to it. This is actually very useful because we can see the database with some mock data before the rules are applied to it. And you can also provide a user context, which would just be an object with a user ID that you could then use to test your rules. The way that I see the database is I provide a data object where every key in that object is the path to the document, and then the value is the data that we want to write to the database. This makes it really easy to see the database because we can just loop over the keys in that object and then write the data to their corresponding paths. Now that we have the mock data seeded in the database, we'll go ahead and apply the security rules. That can be done by calling load Firestore rules, and then we'll want to use the file system to point to the actual raw rules file. And finally, we'll return the actual database instance from this method so we can use it throughout our specs. So now that we have our setup done, I'm also going to export a function called teardown, which will just look for all the Firebase apps that were created on this test run and then delete them once the tests are finished. So those should make your life a lot easier. Now let's look at how we can use them in an actual test. You typically want your database to be secure by default, which means that you'll have allow read and write if false at the very top level of the database. 
This means that all paths are locked down by default unless you specifically allow access to them. Let's go ahead and test that this actually works by first importing our setup and teardown methods. Then Firebase provides us with two testing utilities that we can use to determine whether or not an operation was successful or failed. The first thing we'll do is describe our test suite, which is just our database rules. Then we'll declare the database as a global variable that we can reuse throughout the tests. Then we can use the before all hook to define the database with our setup method that we define in the helpers file. The thing we actually want to test here is that our database is secure by default. So if we try to read or write to any random collection, it should give us a permission denied error. And after all the tests run, we'll also want to run our teardown method to delete those app instances. In Jest, you can write a test by using the test method and then describing what you're testing. In this case, the operation should fail when reading or writing to an unauthorized collection. So there are a few different ways to write your actual tests, and this really just boils down to the developer's preference. I would definitely recommend making this an async function if you like readable code. Then the Firebase assertion helpers will take a promise as their argument, such as a document read. If the read is blocked by security rules in this case, then this promise will resolve. But if the read is successful, then the promise will be rejected. All we have to do is add the result to an expectation, and our first test is completed. If you want to make your code even more concise, you can actually just inline the await statement directly in the expectation. That'll give you a nice and concise single line test, but these get very hard to read as your tests get more complex. I'm going to give you one more option here, which is slightly more advanced, and that's creating your own custom matcher with Jest. What we can do is pass our read directly into expect, and then we can resolve it as a custom matcher that will either be to deny or to allow. Basically, every test that you write will be checking whether or not a document operation was denied or allowed. So having a custom matcher here is super useful because it not only keeps your code concise, but also readable. Let's go ahead and switch back to our helpers file, and then I'm going to write expect extend and provide it with an async function called to allow. The x argument to this function is whatever you pass to the expectation, which should be a Firebase promise. For example, reading or writing a certain path in the database. We will try to resolve the promise, and if it resolves, we know that the test should pass, otherwise we're going to have the test fail. Then from the custom assertion, you just need to return an object that has a pass value, which should either be true or false, and then a message, which is a function that returns a string. And keep in mind that this message will only be shown if the test fails. So now we have a matcher that will fail if the database read or write is blocked by Firebase rules. Then we'll also want to create an inverse matcher to check if a Firebase rule is allowed when it should have been denied. So we'll say to deny and just check with the assert fails method from Firebase. You can use whatever testing methods you want, but I'll be using my custom matchers throughout this lesson. Now I'm going to open up our comment spec, which defines the rules for our comments collection. And in this particular app, a user needs to be authenticated to view comments. And when writing a comment, it must have a user ID that matches the auth user ID. If we look at the actual rules logic, you can see we're allowing reads if the request auth UID does not equal null. And then we're allowing writes if the UID is equal to the request resource data user ID. In other words, the document that the user is trying to write to the database has the same user ID as the actual authentication object user ID. Ensuring that these writes fail is pretty easy. All we have to do is set up the database with an unauthenticated user, and then we can make a reference to our collection and expect that that read or write is denied. But it's even more important that we verify that the operations are allowed when the user has the proper credentials. So this time we'll set up our database with an auth object that has a user ID and an email address. This time we'll expect the reads to be allowed because we have a user that's logged in. I currently have my test running in watch mode, so you can see here if we switch out the matcher that the test will fail if we expect this to be denied. Now when writing to the database, we'll expect the write to succeed if the user sends an object that has the corresponding user ID. So we would expect this add operation to be allowed because it has the same user ID as the auth UID. Then we can add another line here that tries to add an item to the database with a different user ID, and we'll expect that one to be denied. So that's how you test basic user authentication logic. In the next step, we'll look at how we can seed the database with mock data and handle things like role-based access control. Now, going back to our rules, I have a function here called getUserData, which will read a document in the user's collection in the database. So in order to test this function, we'll need to first seed our database with some mock data for the user. Then in that document, we'll have an object that has different roles that the user can have, such as an admin role. 
So now in our projects collection, we can see if the user has this admin role and if they do, we'll allow access. And then we could also do the inverse of this and have the actual document itself define who has access. In that case, we would be building an access control list and we would check if the resource data has any members with the current auth user ID. So essentially we have one rule here that defines logic for role-based access control and also access control lists. The last thing I wanna show you is how to set up the mock data. We defined this earlier in the setup function and we're going to create an object where each key in that object is the path to the document then its value is the object that we want to write to the database. For example, we might have a user that has an admin role, or we might have a project that has an access control list with a certain user in it. Now when we set up the database, we can add the first argument as the authenticated user, and then the second argument will be the mock data object. That will automatically seed our database with the required data, and then we can test it in relation to the authenticated user. Then the remaining tests will look basically the same as they've looked in the past. We'll try to do a read or write operation and then see if it's denied or allowed. So just to wrap things up, writing solid security rules is essential to securing your Firebase app. I'm super excited about the emulator because it makes testing rules much easier and reliable, especially when you're dealing with a big complex app. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap the video up there. If it helped you, like and subscribe. And if you wanna take your development to the next level, consider becoming a pro member at angularfirebase.com. You'll get access to all kinds of exclusive resources designed to help you build and ship your app faster. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.